Hey everyone, it's Jeannie from A1 Vacuum and Sewing and I am getting ready to stitch out the Nativity Bench Pillow. And I know a lot of you are already done with this project, but some of you haven't started. You've been waiting for the video, so here it is. Um, and I am gonna go ahead and get started with stitching out. I'll have to grab my, um, let me grab my, uh, my spreadsheet too. So we are gonna start with, everything's been prepped. There was a video, the video was, uh, it wasn't my best work, but it's out there just in case you need some help and you haven't done it before. We are going to do block one, which is the block with the palm tree and the little lamb. Let me grab my spreadsheet. So here's a little spreadsheet that I put together. You can find this on the A1 Sew Along page under files and all the spreadsheets should be there. But we are going to be doing block number one, which is on page eight, page, whoops, page eight. And... Um, I always put this down that you could use poly mesh. That's what it calls for in your instructions or um, light mesh cutaway. It has many different names, but it's all the same. Or muslin, and I am using muslin. Everyone asks why I use muslin, and I like the way it feels. It's softer. It's not as plasticky. Um, at this point, I think it's cheaper as well to use muslin. Then people ask what kind of muslin should I get. I say don't buy the cheapest and don't buy the most expensive. Or you could buy the cheapest, like, uh, but I, um, I use a 90 inch muslin cause it's kind of like having it on a roll. And then I just cut it down to whatever size I want it. So I am going to be using a seven by 12 magnetic hoop. And these are the new, this is the new seven by 12 magnetic hoop. Um, and uh, this is made by Brother and Baby Lock sells it as well. So I'm going to be using this. And you can take your muslin and run it on a roll vertically or you can run it on a roll uh, horizontally, which I'm going to do today. Normally I run it vertically, but for this, I'm going to run it horizontally. I cut my muslin 17 inches by width of fabric. And I'll add that. That's uh, Usually I cut it up and down, but I'm going to be running it this way, which means I'm going to take each design, put it in, snug it over, rehoop, put my design in, snug it over so that I'm not wasting any fabric or muslin or stabilizer or whatever you want to use. So um, if you are going to be running it up and down vertically, I would use 12 inch stabilizer, 12 inch no-show mesh or poly mesh or whatever you want to call it. But this I'm going to run 17 inches and I'm going to be hooping left to right or right to left, whichever way you want. Um, this just tells us our quilt design, our batting size. I have everything already pre-cut. We did a video on how to cut your pieces on the scan and cut. So because we're cutting our batting two size, the batting is four by eight. You're going to need the little palm tree. This is going to be for the little lamb. You're also, I forgot to bring an embellishment kit home, but, uh, fortunately I have lots of stuff here at the house. Gold mylar topper. This is a wash away topper and then flex foam. And I never, I rarely cut this per the instructions. I usually cut it as I go. So this is all the stuff that we're going to be using. Let's go ahead and hoop up first because this hoop might be new to you. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my hoop up here. Actually, let me, let me move my, my wool mat lives on top of my cutting mat. Oh, and here's my thread colors over here too. And I'm just going to push those back to the side. So you're going to notice with your hair, we'll go ahead and get it from this angle. Hopefully my head won't hit. With your magnets, you're going to have long ones and you're going to have short ones. And the short ones go up here. The long ones go over here. This little dip goes down and into, so it goes this, this direction. Do you see that? So you don't want it the other way. You want it so the dip goes down over the hoop edge. I like this because I feel like it's really secure and snug. I use snap hoops when I'm quilting in the hoop, but I don't usually use them when I'm doing my regular embroidery because I feel like I can accidentally hit the top or something like that, which I don't want to do. What's my best angle? There we go. This is when you use your belly. I use my belly to help me hoop this kind of stuff. And I'll try and fit it in the screen. So I'm just going to lay this down. And I'm going to snug it all the way over. Here's my excess right over here. And I'll go ahead and put these two on first. And you can put them in any order. You could do these two if you wanted first. So you can give yourself a little pinch with these. So I like to kind of put it down and then just drop it. 
And you know what? They're a little harder to reposition. So, oh, that's where he wants to go. I'm going to kind of snug that down a little bit. Just give it, and you don't want to stretch your fabric, but you do want to make it nice and taut. This is where, here, let me see if I can get the belly in here, the belly action. I'm just going to hang this over, and I'm just going to use my stomach to brace it. Here we go. And push it back a little bit. I guess this kind of just falls into place. And you want to make sure this is nice and set. Just pull it back just a little bit. Whoop, wrong way. There we go. And now I'm going to swing it up this way and then we'll put the other ones on. They kind of just go into place. That wasn't quite snug. Oh. And then I'm going to put, or I'll just put push this back with my hand. Just so it's uh, nice and snug over here. And we are hooped. And I like this because the fabric, it's hard to kind of move once it's in place, but it is secure. And I really, really like that. Let's go over to the machine. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put my hoop on. We're just going to slide it on like we normally do. I have a Filtech pre-wound bobbin. I always use pre-wound bobbins. I just go, I don't know. What's the point of winding a bobbin? Plus a pre-wound bobbin is going to be, uh, usually pre-wound bobbins are anywhere between 60, well, depending on what you're getting, but I would look for a 60 to 80 weight. And the perfect combination is a little bit lighter in your bobbin than your upper. So it doesn't this look so nice and ready to go. And I love these. These are the largest wonder clips. Um, and I, I'll just keep it snugged around this to make sure that stays neat and tidy. Let's grab our design. So here we go. I am, I already have my USB up, but if I didn't, let's go home. I'm going to go into embroidery. This button right here, if you're on the Luminera or the Solaris, I'm going to press that. And I put my... This is how I, I keep my designs. So I keep this plugged into my lower port and then I just put my USB in any one of these and then push my little button. I just got this on Amazon, nothing special. Um, so I'm in my lower port. I'm gonna load my quilting design first. So I'm gonna come in here and I put it on your sheet. Sometimes the quilting goes last. Um, actually, I don't have it on here, but the quilting, oh no, I did put it. Quilt first, quilt first, all of these you're going to quilt first, and then you're going to add your embroidery design. So we want stars four. So here's stars four, and the size we want is four by eight. All on your spreadsheet, I'm PES, four by eight, and I'm going to go ahead and set that. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our other design. So I'm going to go, oops, I don't know why I did that. We'll come back in here. I'm going to go add. And now I'm going to add my PES design. So I'm going to go back to my lower port. Um, and I'm going to go PES. And they're in order. So this is the first one that I'm going to do with the palm tree and the little lamb. And I'm going to go ahead and hit set. Now, normally you could fit this into, oh, you know what? This fits perfectly in the 6x10 hoop. But I'm just going to do them all in the all in the seven by 12, just to keep it easy. Um, this will fit into your six by 10. It, it won't fit into a five by seven because you're obviously too tall right there. But if you're adding the quilting design, it adds an extra half inch. So that's why your design that normally would fit into the six by 10, this one right here, it bumps you because it becomes six and a half by eight and a half and it bumps you out of that six by 10. That's why I'm using this hoop. Okay. I'm also going to choose my hoop size. So I'm going to go up here. That's my settings button. I'm not using the 8x12. I am using the 7x12 right here. So I'm going to go into the 7x12. So now you know how much room we have. So we're going to be either losing space on the top and the bottom or the left and the right. So I'm just going to go ahead and lose it on the top and the bottom. Um, touch embroidery. Don't move your design here because they're not grouped and you can group them if you want, but it's easier to just go ahead and touch embroidery. And on this page, the layout page or the second edit page, it's one. So now you can move this and the quilting design and the palm tree and lamb will move together as one. So I'm going to go layout 
and move and I'm going to snug it all the way over to the left. My hoop's on my machine so it won't go out of my embroidery field and we are ready to embroider. So let's go ahead and touch OK. If you touch this button, these are your editing options and this is going to be your stitch out. So we'll just leave it right there for right now. Or actually, I like to go right here. This is where you go forward and backward stitches because we are going to skip some stitches. So first color. We're going to be putting down the batting first and doing the quilting. And you're going to see right here for quilting, it wants that blue. That's Marlin. Let me grab my thread. That's from the thread kit. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this in first because that's going to be the first color that makes a difference. Here, let's go ahead and thread her up. If you're using a mini cone like this, you do not need to use a spool cap. If you do use a spool cap, use the little itty bitty that slides into here. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, let's see, do I have one? A lot of times I just go without. So you're not even going to see it, but I'll have to find one. I'll look for one and we'll use that too. But your thread feeds off really nicely, so you don't even need a spool cap. Okay, first step is going to be placement for your batting. So go ahead and do that step. Whoa, what was that? While it's doing that, I'm gonna spray my batting. You have a wrong side and a right side of your batting. The wrong side's the nubbier side. That should go face down. So that's the side that you spray. People always ask me what kind of spray I use. I'm not a taper. I'm a sprayer. So number one, I use my dime spray tent, which I absolutely love. It just keeps all the aerosol kind of self-contained. And I'll replace this like piece of cardboard there. The spray I use is Ganold KK100. I've never, I've always bought the economy line. It's always been great. The, there's another line and I guess it's non-economy <laughs> and I've never bought it because it's like double the price and why it look like, when I'm happy with this, why do I need to get that? Okay. You don't want to be too heavy handed. Just a light, light spray. We're not here to make it stand up. And I'm going to go ahead and lay this down and you're just going to fit it right inside of those lines. And it doesn't have to be perfect. A little bigger, a little smaller, you're okay. I prefer a little bit bigger. Next step. Next step is the tack down. And we don't need to do that because we cut our batting to size. Turquoise is placement. Orange is the tack down. So I'm going to skip that step. Next step is the placement for the background fabric. You don't need that either. And I should have sprayed my background fabric. Because we're just going to lay this down. You're not going to see it, but I'm going to go ahead and spray my background fabric. If I can find my spray. Okay. We are going to take our background fabric and just center it to the batting. So you're just going to go ahead and just make sure you have about an inch all the way around. And I usually will feel for it. And I can feel that's pretty good. And I'm just going to give it a light press down. And we are skipping this step placement because we already placed. I'm going to go to the next step. That's tack down. I actually like to have my tack down in a different color, but this is already the blue, so it's okay. We're just going to go ahead and go with it. So it's going to do your tack down. Sometimes I'll just get a nice little just... Hold it down a little bit. And now we're on to the quilting. I already have our Marlin Blue. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and you can confirm on here. Take a little peek. Make sure it's your quilting design. Sometimes I accidentally don't skip steps and it's not where I want it to be. And go ahead and do your quilting. I'm just going to hit start. 
and the quilting is so cute. If you see your white thread come up, because it's high contrast between the blue and the white, I would stop and do like a matching bobbin, but mine looks absolutely perfect. Project if you're new to Kimberbell. Let you dip your toes in the water. done with the quilting we're gonna look at our actual embroidery instructions and um, we're gonna stitch step number one stitch the lamb base placement line the little square here with the lines in it means that the color doesn't make a difference but the next color that does is that kind of lighter brown so I'm gonna go ahead and change it out to that color right now so let me take out my blue and 
And we are going to put in, I mean, could there be a more perfect color than Sandcastle? Sandcastle's new to me. So let's go ahead and load in the Sandcastle. And don't forget, because I have forgotten to put in flex foam before, and you just don't want to forget that. Number one, it's fun to have it be a little bit puffy. And number two, um, the placement for the for the top fabric is uh, going to be different than the flex foam. So you definitely don't want to forget the flex foam. Go ahead and hit start. It's going to do your placement stitch. I'm going to grab my flex foam. And I'm going to grab some good scissors. just opened a new pair hang on just a second I almost got super embarrassed because I thought I lost another pair I have a pair floating around somewhere in this room and that's just a little itty bitty guy so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this down I'm not even gonna spray I'm just gonna put it down stitch it down be done with it and then I'm gonna use these little snips these are my havels or havels I call them havels and they're, uh, I want to say they're called Snippies, like Snip Easy E. So that was the tack down. And it said to tape it, but you don't need to tape it. Watch me say that to you, and then you're going to have an issue, and you're going to be like, she said not to tape it. You didn't need to. So maybe you should just tape it. <laughs> it's my disclaimer. I love these snippies because uh, I can just pinch with them and do my cutting. And look, why do you have to cut it to size when you can just lay down your big piece? Right? Save yourself that time. The embellishments, I rarely cut those to size. Look how perfect that is. Okay, and now it says stitch the lamb placement line. You don't know, you don't need that. You know exactly where it's gonna go. I'm just gonna give this a little shot of spray off screen. You're not even gonna see it. Just a little. Sometimes like my finger goes crazy. It's like a huge spray. And if you wanted to do this twice, you'd have enough to place one here and do another one, but I'm just gonna play. This is my exercise in not hoarding fabric. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the tack down, but I skipped the placement because we already knew where it was going to go. Placement's turquoise. Orange is tack down. So I am going to do the orange tack down. Oh, my light wasn't green. I'm like, why not? I never pushed this down. Carriage is going to move and go ahead and stitch. So once you do the tack down, it says stitch the lamb tack down line, apply fray prevented product to the lamb fabric along the tack down line and allow to dry, and then you're gonna trim it close. I'm way too impatient for that. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim it. For me, this stuff is decorative. I'm not gonna be throwing it in the laundry. If I throw it in the laundry and it frays a little bit, I'm okay with that. And then it's gonna want you to stitch the lamb decorative outline. So let's go ahead and we're gonna trim this. Just going to pull it towards me the tiniest bit. Give it a little trim. And there is a decorative outline. So I'm not even really sure, like, why do we need that fray check? I'll probably learn my lesson, but. Snips. Sometimes the snips aren't powerful enough to go through layers. So if this had like shape flex on it and the hot fix and all sorts of stuff, then maybe you wouldn't want to just use the snips. You'd want to use a pair of double curved. Looking good. All right, I'm going to slide that back on. And I'm going to go ahead and do the decorative stitch. And then we're going to do the palm tree placement line. So for the palm tree, if you're using the thread kit, I'm going to be using Spice Brown. I 
I know some people have used like um, minkies and uh, textured fabrics for their little animals, which I think is super cute. Okay, I have never pre-cut my applique pieces. So, this is new to me. I'm gonna go ahead and heat up my iron because we are gonna lay down this palm tree and then press it down. I did put Shape Flex on the back of mine, which I really didn't need to do. Um, I should have just done the fabric, stabilized it with Terial Magic and Best Press Secret Sauce, and then put on the hot fix, and then cut it. It'll just be an extra layer. Oh, you know what that is? That is my hoop hitting my mat. Let me move that back a little bit. I had a cutting mat on the back of my table that my hoop was hitting. We're going to take out our thread. We're going to put in, I'm using Spice Brown. We're just going to have a little contrast from the color of the actual tree. The actual tree is more of like a grazy brown. This is more of like a reddish brown. Okay, placement line. If you look at your screen, it's in turquoise, so that doesn't mean use turquoise thread. That is just your placement line. We're gonna press down our applique piece. So let me come back over here. And this hoop slides on and off so nicely. Here's my applique piece. It has hot fix on the back of it. Make sure that the paper's not on there. And we are just gonna lay this down. I've never done this. And then we don't have to trim it. We're going to affix it. Let's just take a peek under there and make sure we're right where we need to be. Don't get your... Um, you don't want to get your... Whatchamacallit? Oop. Hopefully I'm down far enough. Okay. Adhered. And now we don't have to trim it. We're going to skip and you get to skip the steps too, right? Okay, slid that back on. Let's come on over. 
Hopefully I put that down right. Oh, hang on. Let me move this just like that. Next up is the tack down. Ours is adhered, so we don't need the tack down. So let's go ahead and skip that step. We're going to skip the orange. This is the tack down or the decorative stitch. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. And this is going to be five minutes of stitching.
gorgeous. So that does skip out the step of having to tack down and then cut it out and it's just ready to go. So next step, they want you to stitch the large star placement line and um, color doesn't make a difference. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this spice brown in. And then we're gonna st place the large star wash away topping on top of the mylar. And remember, I forgot my, uh, and you could use King Star. Wouldn't that be so fantastic? I am, I'm not going to do it. I'll just use the regular thread that came in the set. I was just thinking, should I? Shouldn't I? I'm not a very exciting stitcher. I like to stay between the lines. So I'm just going to go with regular sand, which is like a great gold. Let me put that in. And you're going to put your topper on top of your mylar. I don't know. Do we need that? I've never used the topper on top of the mylar before, but let's just follow the instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this on like this. There's your little itty bitty star. He's so tiny. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down. I'm not even going to tape it. I'm just going to stitch it. Remove the tape, tear away the excess mylar and topping. So there's no tape because I didn't put the tape down. So now we're just going to pull away and I usually pull in towards the stitching. And then here we go. I'm going to pull in towards this. This was just a uh, leftover that I had in my, do we really need that? Now I'm going to have to rinse that away. That looks gorgeous. I know you can't really tell, but I don't know. There's something about it that just looks adorable. Um, and now I want you to stitch the large star satin outline. We're going to slide this back on. Just hit start. And then we're going to stitch the small star fills and then the eyelets. And then we're done with this one. We're going to rehoop and do the next one. I'm going to get ready for that. Okay, go ahead and hit start. It's going to do the little stars, and I'm going to be getting ready for the next embroidery. Cute. That looks amazing. And look at with the quilting. I just love it. Then get your blue ready because we're going to put that back in. We're going to uh, stitch out the eyelets.
Let's change out our thread. And we are going to put the marlin back in or whatever blue you're using. Just hit start and there's three little eyelets. And these are gonna be for your fairy lights. And this last step, you're not even going to do. It says in your book, um, do not stitch this step. These lines are for design placement only. You are done. Let's go ahead and let's rehoop. I'm going to come back over here. That looks amazing. Oh my goodness. I think we can get through this project. Okay. I put this aside for the next block. I wasn't sure which person it was, if it was like the tall one or the little one, so I pulled them both out. We'll figure that out when it does the placement line. And we're just gonna remove these. Nice and secure. And there is a little lip here for you to put your fingers under those. We're just gonna Take this out and we'll slot it over a little bit. Don't cut this one off yet. And we just need a little room in between. I'm gonna put these back on. Is it above and below? And I guess I don't need to use my belly. I could just kind of pull this to the side a little bit so it's nice and snug. I just like using the belly. I'm like, oh, look, the belly's useful. <laughs> I'm just pulling that up the tiniest bit. I'll pull this down the tiniest bit. Oop. And we are hooped. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this on the machine. Let's come on over. And let's clear our screen. So to clear your screen, just go home, say okay. And I'm gonna go embroidery to the pocket. Let's grab my spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet says, oh, look it. We're gonna be centering this differently. It's gonna be a little bit different. So we're gonna go into our pocket. We're gonna put our quilting design in first. And for this one, it's stars five. So stars five, and it wants the six by eight size. So I'm gonna go into my PES design and six by eight. I have, um, mine is the project bundle. So I have only the quilting designs that are gonna work with this. So I don't have to look through everything else. So there's my six by eight. I'm just gonna touch set. And now we're gonna add our other design. Don't move this at all. We're just gonna to touch add down here in the bottom left. Pocket, I'm in my lower USB and I'm gonna get my PES designed. I named it that way. This is my next design. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch that. 
We're going to touch set. That means I choose you, but we're not going to leave it like that. Um, they want us to, and I put it here. It says centered vertically. So that's up and down. Uh, and far right star is a quarter inch from the right edge. So that's my far right star over here. And it's going to be a quarter inch from the right edge. So you could, I can go into here. This is when I like to use my grids. So here are my grids and I'm going to turn in my one inch, three eighths inch. That doesn't make as much sense to me. So I'm just going to go here into my one inch and I'm going to go. I want my fastest speed. I'm going to, oh, you know what? When you're using this hoop, the fastest speed you can go is 800 stitches per minute. So I'm going to say, okay. And um, I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, let's move this design right behind here. I wonder if I can get in, zoom in a little bit for you. There we go. So I want the design. I can see the red box is around the smaller part. So I'm going to go ahead and put the red box around the main design. And I'm going to take that and I'm just going to move it to the left so that the red line is on one of these one inch lines. There. So now I'm right on that one inch line. Now I'm going to select my other design by hitting my select button. I'm not going to try and touch it because I don't want to move the one behind it. Now it's around the one with the donkey. And that's right over there. I'm going to eyeball because I can see here and I'm just going to eyeball about a quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to line it up with the lines in between. So that's about a quarter of an inch. Over would be half, another quarter, and then we're back to the one inch. So you kind of have to eyeball this one. It didn't want you to move the design up and down. So I only move my design left and right. I'm not centered here right now. So I'm going to say okay. I'm going to say embroidery, which is going to take me to my other screen, and it's going to combine these two designs. So I'm going to touch embroidery, change to a larger frame. Oh, you know what? I must be out of my field. So let me go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to go ahead and line it up with this one over here. Okay. So we're going to go move. I'm going to go to the big outside one. I'm going to go snug it up with this. Hopefully I'm still going to be in my you know what? I'm outside of it. Okay. I'm just going to go to the center of this one. That looks like the center. I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to go to my next one. And I am going to move that one. This is the outermost part. And then if I move it into the next... That other green line, that's a quarter inch. I'm going to say okay. You can barely see it, but there's the outline of my 7 by 12. So I'm going to go into my grids. I'm going to get rid of those grid marks. And now you can see it. So now I'm right there. Do you see the outline of my 7 by 12? So um, the quarter inch is really, you have the red outline, and then you have a green line, and then the next green line, that's about a quarter of an inch to the next green line. That's good enough. So we're going to go ahead and say embroidery. They're combined here. I'm going to go layout, move, center. And now it's centered to this. And, but we really want it all the way snugged over to the left. So they're combined. I'm just going to move it all the way over to the left. Just like that. I'm trying to decide if I'm like saving more because I'll have this that I'm saving. Or if I should have gone up and down. But we'll just leave it. Alrighty. Um, we're ready to stitch. Go ahead and say embroidery. Save about an inch over there. Layout shows you what you're stitching out down here. And then we can go backwards and forward steps. And let me go ahead and shrink this back up so we can see just like that. Next one. First step, placement line. Go ahead and hit start. And I'm going to spray my background and my batting.
Okay, I cut this to size, so it's six by eight inches. And then my background fabric, I already went ahead and sprayed that as well. So there's Shape Flex on the back of this just to give it a little bit more support. And you wanna be about an inch all the way around this. And just feel for it. That feels good. And then you can press it down. We're gonna skip some steps. So this step right here is the tack down for the batting. Don't need that. We cut it to size. Placement for the background, don't need that. We already laid it down. Tack down. So you want the tack down for the background. I've probably said that like a hundred million times and never realized it kind of rhymes. Okay, this is gonna tack down and then we're gonna do the quilting. And it's 11 minutes of stitching. So just go ahead and hit start. And it's a good time to tidy the room. I'm actually getting ready to stitch out um, the Headless Horseman. So, whoops. Oh no, for a minute I thought I messed up, but I didn't. Just go ahead and stitch this. And I'm gonna do some prep work for my other project.
quilting so amazing, it really makes the project. It's just like the, the perfect touch.
And now we're going to stitch the little donkey. I like to show this each time I do a, um, a sew along. I don't, some people will cut their thread, uh, they'll cut it, they'll cut it here and then they'll grab at the needle and pull it out. But what I like to do is I unthread it. So I'll just unthread it behind here. I'll thread it to here. And then once you get past this step, it just like literally just falls right out. Like it doesn't fall out, but it comes out so easily. There's no tension on it. And that is how I take out my thread. I don't pull it back, but I used to because I didn't know that was a no-no. So I used to take my thread and just pull it back. And I'm just one of those lucky people that never had an issue. But what you don't wanna do is pull it back past here because there's a tension disc in there. And you don't want it to get wrapped around that. So that is how I take out my thread. We're gonna do our placement line first. Or actually, you know what? These are gonna be his little donkey legs. So let me look at the instructions just to make sure I don't lead you astray. Um, we did all the quilting and now we're going to stitch the donkey legs and tail fill. So color does make a difference. I am using Sandcastle. And then you're going to stitch the donkey base placement line. And then we'll know where to put our flex on. We are 13 minutes into 32 minutes. tail time. Let's stitch out his little tail. Oh my god, those legs are so cute. I really love this like little bean stitch or this running stitch that goes around. It just like just makes it pop. You're 
gonna leave that same color in. You could change it if you want, but why? Because color doesn't make a difference. And it is going to do the placement line for the foam. I have my little piece of foam here. Just gonna lay this down, not even gonna tape it. Make sure it covers your entire stitch line though, which mine does. You can kind of lift it up and back a little bit. Looks like a little dachshund. I'm gonna get my favorite snips. And let's trim it out. And pinch, and cut, and pinch. It's like your little workout, your little finger workout. I'm gonna move this over here so I can see it a little better. Slide it out towards me a little bit. And we'll just cut this so we can throw this away. This stuff over here. It's my exercise. Jeannie can throw things away. Because sometimes I... The, the the gals at the shop, when I'm like, throw it away, they're like, oh, throw it away, do it fast before she changes her mind. Oh, he's so cute. Okay, um, then it's going to be a placement line for your donkey. You don't need that. I'm going to spray my donkey fabric, though. Let me spray it over here and then I'll bring it over. And I like barely spray. There are a couple of times where I will get heavy handed. Let me go ahead and slide that on. We're going to skip a step because the placement line is in turquoise. We don't need that. I'm just going to go to the next step. That's going to be my tack down. We want the tack down and we want to trim. And again, the, I don't know why, but they do have you using the fray check, which I'm not going to use. And I hope I don't regret it. But I think it's fine, and I think we need it. We're going to go ahead and trim this. Trim the fabric close to the stitch line, being careful not to cut the leg stitching. So you got to be careful that your little scissors don't go into those stitches right there. So that's one of the benefits of using the curved scissors because they curve up and away. So there's lots of benefits for the curve. The curve lets you get nice and close. And you want to get nice and close because that decorative stitch is not a satin stitch. And so there are little threads that can kind of peek up. Come here, little donkey. This is when you learn you can contort. You're like, oh my God, I didn't know that my arm bent like that. <laughs> this isn't so close. I could get closer than that. And he's not so close either. You can always, you're not, you, if you do like a bad job cutting, you're not like married to that. You could fix it and clean it up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna slide him back on and let's do this uh, decorative stitching. So now it's gonna do the decorative stitching. We are on step six. We're 
18 minutes in. And get your linen next. You can also heat up your iron. So color doesn't make a difference, but we're gonna do the placement line for the shepherd. And I'm gonna do it in linen, which is like my favorite creamy off-white. Um, and I am gonna put the linen in just because I don't want a darker color to shadow through, which I don't think would really be an issue because it says color doesn't make a difference. But just to be sure, let's go ahead and put in the linen. And then I'm gonna take the hoop off. We're gonna press down our pre-cut shepherd. And I'm fast forwarding because we already cut our pieces on the Scanica. I was actually over at my computer kind of playing around with the applique pieces for the Headless Horseman. Because now that I know I can cut my applique pieces, I just go, yeah, why don't I just pre-cut them? They're ready to go. Here we go. Here's my hoop. Looks like it's the big guy. So make sure your fabric's on front. I have my uh, my hot fix on the back. I'm just gonna go ahead and lay them down. And I am going to go inside those lines the best I can. Oh, shoot. Is he hot? He's not hot, but I'm gonna go ahead and just, ooh, I don't wanna get, just want it to kind of, And let me heat him up and really get him to adhere. Is he down? He's down. He's semi down. But let's get that iron heated up. And then we're going to press him for real. And he's done. So um, I'm skipping some steps because of this, because I'm not putting a big piece of fabric down, doing the tack down and trimming. I'm going to skip right to the decorative stitch that's going to go around this. I'm loving it. I was like, am I really going to save time? Am I going to like it? And I love it. I love it. I love that it's pre-cut. Just going to press him down for real this time. And let's go back over to the machine. Let me put my hoop on. And I feel secure moving this around. Like if I was using my snap hoop, I would worry. I would worry that maybe I would bump the top. But these magnets are so secure. Okay, so we are ready to do, um, so this is the tack down, orange is tack down. I'm gonna skip it, because I don't need to trim. I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch this. Let's go ahead and hit start. And we have eight minutes of stitching here. So I'm just gonna let it stitch away.
He looks really good. Love it. the large star placement lines and I'm just going to put down the mylar. Okay, is it me or is this like the easiest bench pillow ever?
that's that stitch that I love. It just makes it, just makes it pop. You get puckering like this, don't worry about that because we're gonna press that all out. Okay, color doesn't make a difference and it says stitch the large star placement line. I'll just go ahead and leave the cream in. And then we're gonna place three large stars mylar pieces with the topping. I'm not gonna do the topping. I'm going to change my thread now and I'm going to go ahead and put that um, sand in, the sand color, that gorgeous golden yellow or golden gold. And I'm just going to do each star one at a time. So let me grab my mylar. It looks like it's going to start with this one. And you can tape it down. <gasps> oh my God, did my hand look so wrinkly? I'm so sorry you had to see that. It gets wrinkled under there, it's no problem. Once this one's finished, I'm just gonna hit stop on the machine. It's gonna cut, I'll hit stop, it'll go to the next one, but it won't start stitching. Okay, so I just hit the start stop. And I'm gonna just peel this one away. So cute. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one down right now. We'll just do this. Stitch away. hand on the start stop once it cuts you can go ahead and hit start stop I'm gonna put my foot up so I can just slide this towards me we'll rip this away and we'll lay this down for the very last one Once it starts stitching, I just move my hand away. If it gets folded up, doesn't make a difference. It'll still look gorgeous. Let me go ahead and rip this away. And it looks beautiful. I'm gonna slide the hoop back on, hit start, and it is gonna do the detail in the stars. Stitch the large star satin outline, and then we'll stitch the small stars. Almost done with this one. Got three more minutes of stitching.
Okay, you have two minutes of stitching for the small stars, so just let that go. And then we'll do the eyelets and we're done. star. Okay, I'm going to take out my sand thread. I'm going to put in Marlin. I love this blue because it's not quite navy and it's not quite royal. It's like this blue, like just a really rich, gorgeous blue. And you have three eyelets. Go ahead and just stitch those out. And then we're ready to rehoop. Oh my goodness, wouldn't it be so much fun if we stitch this entire thing out today? Easy peasy. Hope you're feeling comfortable with it. And it's okay to skip steps. Some of them you just don't need. But if you're uncomfortable with that, then do them all. There's no right or wrong way to do this. There's many different ways to do it. And we are done. Look at how shimmery those stars. I don't know if you can see that, but they really do shimmer. Oh my God, that one is like the most shimmery, shimmeriest of the shimmery ones. And we are done. So now we've done block one, block two. Let's go ahead and rehoop for block three. So onward and upward to block number three. So let's go ahead and come over here. We're going to rehoop. You can see how I do that again. And you know how much stabilizer you waste on either side. When we rehoop like this, you're going to have, you're going to be able to snug them in pretty tight. So I'm going to go ahead and take these off first. And it looks beautiful. You are beautiful. 
Okay, and I mean, this outside line is pretty much your cut line, so you can kind of like abut these and you're gonna have plenty of room. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slide that over. I'm gonna unroll this. Remember, this is 90 inches, so I have lots of room and I can cut the palm tree. If I wanna cut one off, I can cut this one off, but I'll just leave it because that's what I usually do. And I'm just gonna feel for my hoop. I can feel it's right there. Let's go ahead and grab my big ones first. And I like the way these just kind of like fall in place when you put them on. They just like go where they're supposed to go. Okay, I'm going to snug my fabric up just like this. Just stretch it ever so slightly. And I'm going to pull this this way. Or I could turn it, use my belly. Remember, this part goes on the inside. I guess I could do these next if I wanted to. I could do these, then the top and the bottom. doesn't seem like it's in the right place. Snug that up. Pull this. And it looks gorgeous. Fold this back up. Use my big clips. And you can do what I'm doing right now with just regular stabilizer on a roll. Don't cut it, just let it hang over to the side. I'm gonna go slide this on my machine. I think we might be able to make it through this embroidery and then we're going to have to change out our bobbin. Bobbin might run out. Uh, let's go ahead and grab our next pieces. The next pieces that we're going to need. So the block one and block seven are the small skinny ones. And then the middle ones, two, three, four, and are there... How many blocks are there? So the ones on the outside... This one and this one are skinny, and then these are all gonna be bigger. So I'm gonna grab one of my bigger pieces of batting. Here's my skinny one for the outside. And one of my bigger pieces. And then let's see what the middle pieces are. So we're doing block three right now, and we need uh, we need two piece, two that are facing, so we need them facing uh, the right. So I think this is facing the left too. This one is facing the right. So I think this, we need this little guy and this little guy here. Make sure your fabric side up and then we need the angel. Here's my angel and that's it. Then we're going to use flex foam on this little guy and we need one of these pieces. The piece for the lamb is two and a half by two. I'm just going to lay it down right here. This is my two and a half by two. Perfect. And I think we're ready to go. Um, I'll take these right here. I'm going to take these two and I'm going to spray them. So let's just go ahead and spray them right now. My spray tent, nubby side, the nubbier side is up. And this is my background fabric right here. And you don't have to go crazy with this. And these are set and ready to go. All right, to the machine. My hoop is already on. Oops, hang on, let me. Let's load our design. Let me grab my spreadsheet. Here we go. I've got wrinkly pages because I spilt water on this book. Okay, I'm going to go home to clear my screen. And the one that we did is the only one that isn't centered, where both designs are centered. So now we're just going to center everything. So that's good to know. Embroidery pocket. I am looking for stars four. Nativity quilting, 
stars for. I usually name it like Nativity Quilting, Nativity PES. Cuties Quilting, Cuties PES is how I name my files. And we want size six by eight. Set, add. We are gonna add, you, I, I must have hit embroidery. So if you get to this screen, to get to the previous screen, just hit return. So I'm right here, add. Nativity PES, and we're doing this one right here. We're gonna set it, and we're ready to go. Touch embroidery. That's gonna combine your designs. I'm gonna go layout, move. I'm gonna snug it all the way to the left. Say okay. If I did this over, I think I would uh, be doing vertical because you lose so much on the top and the bottom, and you don't lose a lot on the left and the right. But whatever, I'm already working. So, um, and I think we're set. Let's go ahead. We're gonna do our placement line first. I already have my blue in. I'm gonna leave it in there and let's do our placement line. And then I can grab my pieces. My pieces are already sprayed and ready to go. Cause I'm losing like six inches top and bottom this is 34 minute stitch out it's taken us so far an hour and 45 minutes to do the first two blocks. So go ahead and lay this down. That's your batting. Now I'm gonna lay down my background fabric and just gonna kind of center it to the batting piece. Don't center it to your hoop because you kind of snug things over a little bit. And I'm just gonna press it down a little. We're gonna skip some steps. So touch layout again, you can see what's stitching out. Go to your button here where you go forward and backward stitches. This is tacked down for the batting, skip it. Background, um, placement line for the background, skip it. Tack down for your background, we're gonna stitch that out. So if you're doing the steps I'm doing, that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna only stitch step one and four. You're skipping steps two and three. I like to just kind of lay my hand on this just to make sure everything's smoothed down. And I like to tickle my fabric. And then we're going to do the quilting. It's going to be five minutes of quilting. I'm going to do something really risky. I'm gonna leave the room for this because I wanna print something out for a headless horseman. So I will be right back and I'm just gonna trust that everything's gonna go perfectly.
Is that stitch just gorgeous? Looks so beautiful. All those celestial stars. And I'm back just in time. Oh, so, okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch out those little lamby legs. So I'm gonna get my sandcastle thread ready to go. I think we are almost done with this. We're just gonna finish up that star in the upper left. And then we'll do the foam. Okay, take out my blue thread. And if you look at your screen, you should see little lamby lakes. So we'll do the little lamby lakes first. Oh, look who just opened the door. Mr. Momo and Miss Poppy. While it's doing this, I'm gonna spray that little piece of brown fabric. Look how cute those little legs are. Okay, next step is gonna be the placement for the flex foam. Okay, I have two wild animals in here. They are playing. No animals were injured in the making of this video. And I think that spot's perfect for that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lay this down. This is my tack down. And then I'll get my snips out. The heavy breathing is not me, although I do breathe like that when I'm really relaxed. All right, so I'm gonna back this up towards me just a little bit. My fabric is ready, I've already sprayed it. What happens if you cut your threads? That's okay, don't worry about it. The, the fabric's going to cover over the, um, the flex foam. It's all gonna be okay. Now the, uh, the tack down for your fabric goes outside of this, that's why it's really important. I did try to fudge it once. Where Look how huge this is. I just can't, yes I can. Jeannie, just put it down. Be okay with it. There's going to be a little bit of waste. Not a big deal. I almost couldn't do it. You know what I was going to do? I was going to reach into the trash and I was going to get grab leftover fabric from the other one because look, it would have easily have fit on here. But then what would I have done though with this silly little square of fabric that would have just been floating around my sewing room? Would have just tormented me. Okay, we're gonna trim this. Yeah, and the reason we didn't pre-cut these is because it was going over flex foam. 
And so you just, it's just better to have a big piece of fabric to put over your flex foam. It just is. Oh, this is not some pretty trimming, is it? Get a little bit closer. And next step. Now we're gonna go ahead, I'm looking at my screen. Did I skip a step? Oh, you know what? It was supposed to be the placement and then the tack down. So I need to skip this step because I already did, um, I already did my, uh, I used my placement as my tack down. So we're gonna skip to this step and now we're gonna go ahead and it would have just stitched right over that. But um, now it's gonna do the decorative stitching. Make sure your hoop is on. Go ahead and hit start. That placement and that tack down would have been in the same spot. So that's why it's a good idea to always look at your screen. You can see where you're at. I looked at it and I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't look like a decorative stitch. So I just fast forwarded it. This is step number six. And then we're gonna do the placement for the shepherd and I am gonna put the linen in there. It's a good time to heat up our iron. Take out your thread. I'm gonna put in my linen. Oop, that wasn't in right, was it? And we're gonna do the placement line for the two shepherds. I do love this. I just love how my pieces are all set and ready to go. Mama and Poppy are playing and she plays dirty. I have never seen Momo bite her ankles or feet, but that's what Poppy does. I don't know if she does that because she was, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put my camera over here. I don't know if she does that because when she was a puppy, she was so little and that was the way she could get him. But she's not so little anymore. And that's what she goes for is his little too bad they didn't do the angel all at the same time, right? But we have this. Here's this one. And then we have this one. So I'm going to, in this thread, I'll just kind of cover it over. So I don't have to snip it. Oh, that's not the right guy. Okay, we'll put this one down first. Let's put this one down first. You can kind of lift up a little bit. Make sure you're like right on track. And that looks good to me. And let's find the right, the right little guy. The angel is for sure. Wrong direction, wrong direction. Right direction, but wrong guy. Okay. We have another one somewhere. There is my wise man. All right, I'm going to pause while I find the right guy. For a second, I got worried. Found her? Found him. Found her. I was worried about the hot fix that it was going to be like too thick, but it is working out perfectly. 
and we're ready to go. I'm going to take this over to the machine and slide her on. This is when I'm going to check my hoop and make sure like one of those wise men aren't sticking to the back of my fabric because I could totally see myself doing that. All right, let's go back to the machine. So this is the tack down so that you could trim your piece. Don't need that. Mine are pre-cut. And here is my stitching. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. And this is 13 minutes. My bobbin might run out. And while it's doing this, I'm going to get together my pieces for block four.
if you're doing this on another machine, one of the things that's so great about the Luminaire and the Solaris is that they do a satin stitch at full speed. So I'm not sure, um, you know, I haven't done this on a different machine, so I'm not sure if your satin stitch is going as fast as mine, but the nice wide stitches, it goes full speed. This is the shepherd detail and satin outline. You're gonna stitch the angel fill. Go ahead and hit start. It's gonna do some of the little angel detail like his little feet. And then we'll do the placement. This is kind of crazy because I'm not used to not trim an applique. Angel's head, and then there's going to be a little horn. Okay, here's your placement stitch for the angel's body. I'm gonna heat up my iron. Come over here. believe I haven't lost any pieces. That is an accomplishment for me. 
because my superpower is losing things. Let's see. I think that looks good, right? Let's take a peek underneath. Yeah, that looks good. He is adhered. I'm gonna go slide this on. No trimming necessary. So the next step on your screen is orange. That's your tack down. We're gonna skip that. So I'm gonna skip that. And this is, this is the stitching. This is, I'm like, why do I have a red light? Cause I didn't put my little lever down. And I think it's gonna do a decorative stitch on top of the angel. Tack down, stitch the angel. Hang on there. Okay, so I just made a mistake because it says um, we're on right here. So sorry about that. But it says stitch the angel placement line, place the angel fabric right side up, stitch the angel tack down line, which I didn't have to do and just trim the fabric close, and place the angel mylar over the angel, and then you're gonna stitch the angel tack down line. So let me go ahead and hit my cut button. Let me put my foot up and... So what I need to do is, that's my fabric, that's trimming all of it, I need my mylar. So we need to put the mylar down. I need to go back steps, oops, steps. And that's okay, because that happens sometimes, right? What do you do? Cut your thread first, because you don't want to drag it all around. This right here is where you go forward, and this will go back. And if you hit it once, it'll go back to the step that you're on. So let me get my mylar. And I don't know if I told you, but I forgot to bring, um, I forgot to bring my, uh, my embellishment kit home. So luckily I have everything in my stash. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. And this is just going over the angel's body. So you don't have to have it over the whole thing. And you can tape it down. And we should be good to go. I've always wondered if I could get away with not getting an embellishment kit. So we're on this step right now. This step, it's doing the stitching and then we're gonna pull away the mylar. So we're stitch the angel, tack down line two and fill two. We'll tear away the mylar and then we'll stitch the angel satin outline. Now we're gonna pull away the mylar. Let's go ahead and do our satin stitch outline. And then we're gonna do the gold stars.
We're 28 minutes into our 34 minute stitch out. just take a peek and to make sure my thread isn't shredding but if you your mama ears make tell you something doesn't sound right it's really thick here so I think that's all it is I can feel it if you break a needle like it's thick so don't worry about it the other thing I'm gonna do is just check my bobbin and make sure that that looks okay I'm pretty much down to the end and sometimes at the very end, look at that. Do you see that? It looks kind of icky there. And look, it's not pulling. So, toss that bobbin, get a brand new one. I had one waiting in the wings. Where is it? There it is. And just trust your mama ears. That didn't sound right. I knew I was getting near the bottom of my bobbin too. So I've kind of been hanging out. And that can cause stuff to pull into when it wasn't feeding out. And I'm not even going to go back steps just because uh, it's just a tight satin stitch. Okay, I'm seeing turquoise on my screen. So I know that's gonna be a uh, placement stitch and we're doing our large stars. So we're gonna be working with the gold mylar. 
my love makes everything beautiful. So put your sand, uh, sand back in, your sand thread, or a nice gold. You could do king star. And there is only one big star in this one. I'm going to grab my piece of mylar that I've been using. And let's place this down. You can tape it if you want. the mylar and it's going to do the uh, the satin stitch. I like to pull it in towards my embroidery. stitch the rest of the smaller stars and there's four of them so just go ahead and hit start and then we'll do our eyelets and done block number three done right and we have three eyelets to stitch so go ahead and put your blue thread in I'm using Marlin if you ever need individual colors like you don't want to buy the whole thread set you can just send me a note and I'll order you individual colors Thank you. 
And that is it. That is block number three. I'm just like on a roll. Let's keep going. So let's come on over here. Next block is going to be the manger or the stable, whatever we want to call it. So we are done with this block. Let's unhoop. And unhooping is as easy as pulling these magnets off. If you struggle with your hands, it could be a little harder to pull these off. I think there's um like my 10 and a half by 10 and a half came with a little tool, but you could just put your fingers under here and just kind of lift them. And at this point, why don't we cut some of these off? So I like to turn it to the back side. And that way I can see the stitching and I'm going to cut right in between. I was kind of daydreaming about uh, the borders because I think we're going to be quilting those. And I was daydreaming that I could, you know, save these strips on the top and the bottom and um, sew those together. And <laughs> I was like, how can I use that so I'm not wasting it? I don't know if it'll be worth it. So I'm just going to attach this to over here on the left-hand side. I can feel where it's going to go. Just like that. I'll clip these again. Whoops! Threw that across the room. And let's hoop up. I'll put these big ones on first. Let's try it differently this time. I'm going to put these on first. I just love that those just go right where they're supposed to go. Okay. Maybe I'll do the top and the bottom next. I'm new to this. So I am getting to know, getting to know you. That's on the song I'm singing to my hoop. Getting to know all about you. I guess it doesn't have to go on any particular way. You can just put it on whatever way works best for you, right? You don't want to pull it super taut. Um, like you don't want to stretch the muslin. You just want to pull it so it's taut, but not stretched. That's a better way to putting it, right? And it looks beautiful. Let's go ahead and slide it onto the machine. Uh -oh. You hear that? That's the sound of Poppy playing in my batting. And I already put this to the side, large backing piece large batting. That's your stable. And there is um, baby Jesus gets here. And then Mary and Joseph, I think. That's probably who's in there. That's who would be in there traditionally, right? All right. And let's load it up. I am going to go home. That's going to clear my screen. Let's grab my spread, my handy dandy spreadsheet. We are doing, we did one, two, three. We are on block number four and it is stars five embroidery. Somebody's demanding to be let out. Uh, quilting stars five and we need PES and we need this size. And again, for me, only the ones that are being used in this design are showing because I have like an instructor set. Uh, we are going to add, and we don't have to do any special layering of our designs. So let's just go Nativity PES. Here is my stable. And go ahead and set it, and everything's set where it needs to be. We're just going to touch embroidery. My layout is already up. I like to hit this button so I can go backwards and forward steps. And let's go ahead and say OK. And somebody's getting a little impatient. Just go ahead and hit start, and it is going to do the placement for the batting. Oh, look at this. I'm going to spray my batting and my background fabric. Here is my batting. 
I was a little heavy handed with that one. I don't know if you could hear that. Sometimes I can't control my finger. And there's our background fabric. So we're skipping. That looks good. Skipping steps two and three. This is step two. That's tacked down for the batting. We don't need that. So we're going to go here and skip that. That's placement for the, uh, that's the placement stitch for the background fabric. We already laid our down, ours down. That's the tack down for the background. We're going to keep that one. So just go ahead and hit start. And then after we do this, we'll be the quilting. Oh, this is a long one, 54 minutes. So there's a lot going on with this one. I mean, just the quilting stitches take a long time on this. And I didn't lay this down evenly, but that's okay, because this is really our cut line. Not, th I would never cut right on that, but you're gonna fussy cut to that. And go ahead and hit start. 11 minutes of stitching for the background fabric. I'm going to live on the edge and leave the machine so I can print out some instructions for my headless horseman. I printed only half of them out, so I'll be right back.
beautiful stitching. You look gorgeous. Still gone. So we'll lay this down first. After we do this. After we do this. Let's see what happens next. Ooh, we're gonna lay down gold glitter. Which of course, like I said, I forgot to bring home the embellishment kit, but I have lots of gold glitter. So it says peel the plastic film from the glitter and you're gonna load the embroidery design. Ours is already loaded. And then we're gonna stitch the halo. So those halos are gonna be gold glitter. So I'm gonna pull from my stash. So I'll show you what I have. And it started out small. It started out small and then it got not so small. And I used to have it really organized. This was like all my glitter, my litter, my glitter and my litter. It was my glitter and it was my leather and my felt. And then over here was like my Mylar. Now I don't even know. Now it looks like I just have two tubs of junk. But look at all of this gold glitter. So who needs my embellishment kit? I'm just going to be using this. But embellishment kits are nice when you don't want to think, and there's lots of times in my life that I think a lot, so sometimes I like to not think at all. probably have about three or four more minutes of the quilting.
Last square. you to stitch the halo design so we're gonna put in our sand thread and actually that is in just thread so I think this the gold is actually down on the bottom it might be the hay but I'm guessing you know when I do this this is the first time I'm doing it there's no dress rehearsal Every once in a while, something will be really bad and I'll have to film it again. But for the most part, it's just one shot. Then we're going to stitch the Holy Family placement line. So uh, it'll be a good time to heat up your iron. believe how productive I've been today. I've had a really, really, really tough time motivating because I've been really tired. And the other thing is I definitely feel like I'm suffering from chemo brain. And so I've been worried about just the quality of my work. <laughs> the quality of my work has been called into question by myself because I want to make sure it's perfect for you. And, you know, I'm rarely ever perfect, but I struggle a little more these days. step and this is a light color so I'm just gonna leave it and I'm gonna do the placement line and then we'll go ahead and we'll put down uh, we'll put down the um, the applique pieces
So I wasn't paying attention, but it looked like it skipped this and you really do need that placement line. So I'm going to go back and this is always a good learning lesson. So I'm going to go back to that step. This is a tack down. It's an orange. This is going to go forward. This is going to go backwards. And I can tell that's in turquoise. Now you have your, let's hit plus 10. You have that little green crosshair. There we go. And I'm going to like, well, let's go ahead and hit plus. So now it's over here. I'm going to go minus 10. And then I'm going to go plus ones until it just bounces over there. Okay, that's the beginning of that. For some reason, the thread didn't pick up. Holy wrinkly hands. There we go. And once it does that, I'm going to hit stop. I'm going to just cut. And now we're ready to go. Slide this off. Come on over here. There are my placement lines. I got my little Oliso because I was like, oh, you know, it's tiny. It's easy to fit into the hoop. Why don't we just use that? The other one's tiny too, but this one's even smaller. And so you don't have to worry about getting any of those edges. And I'm going to just do one of these at a time. For a minute, I was like, wait a minute. Am I pressing it down right? They're coming out with new tiny Elisas that are so cute. Make sure you have fabric side up. And it's warm, so it's just sticking. We'll put this one down too. Now we can push the whole thing down. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this puppy off. Am I off? Yes, off. Okay, we are he adhered. Let's come on back over here. And now it is time to satin stitch, I think. Let me look at my instructions. Check your hoop, make sure nothing's sticking to it. Fluff your fabric, make sure nothing rolled underneath. And I'm looking at my screen right now, so I had to go back. I'm, it's still turquoise, so we didn't finish the whole thing. I'm gonna go right here where we can go backwards and forwards. I'm going to fast forward through the rest of that. That's my tack down, which we don't need because my pieces are cut to size, and that is my satin stitch. Do you need to put in the linen thread? So let me take out sand and we've got 13 minutes of stitching. And just let it go.
Isn't it gorgeous? And you know what I love? Look at that stitch. So just by the, the, the way it stitches, it can give your embroidery more depth. That's like a totally cool pattern. And it's stuff that you're not gonna see, just, you just don't see it until you actually stitch it out. We are about halfway done, so we've got a little bit more time on this. Okay, I'm gonna finish up his satin stitching and then I'm gonna pause the video and uh, I will finish stitching this out later. Patrick and I are gonna have a romantic date with my friend Lynn, who's visiting from New York and we're gonna go to the lake and it's sad to say like I live here but I haven't been to the lake to go and hang out it's probably been a couple of years. So, yeah, gonna just go up there and do what people do when they come to visit Lake Tahoe. Oh, we've got some fringe coming up too, so you need a water-soluble bobbin after this. 
we're stitching the whole holy family detail and satin outline and then when you see all of this this means we're going to have some fringe and we're going to be changing our thread out so the thread i like to use is vanish let me show it to you And you can buy it on like a little mini spool or you can buy it like this. I like to buy it in this bigger version. So if I ever want to practice some quilting, I can do that. And I'll use it in classes sometimes so I can reuse quilt sandwiches. I'll do the stitching and then I'll just, because uh, a lot of times you can't finish the project in the class. So I'll do the stitching and then I'll go ahead and dissolve the thread, pull out the threads on top. And then we're right back at using it all over again. So we'll finish this up. I like to put my vanish, let me grab this. Here's my bobbin boat, you gotta have some bobbin boats. And then I keep some spools in here, like this one for instance. And it looks like regular thread, so you better mark your bobbin. And this one, I know it's hard to read that, but that does say vanish. And um, that's water soluble. So I always keep a couple of spools, like here's another one, and there's one right behind it. So I always keep a, a couple of bobbins loaded up with uh, vanish thread. So I'm always ready to dissolve it if I need to. minutes into a 54 minute stitch out this is a good place to call it take a break time joining me. I'm going to go ahead and pause it here. So we are halfway through block number four, we're getting ready to do some fringe on the bottom. I think we're going to have some hay down here. And um, I'll just go ahead and post this and you can join me back here and we will finish this block and I will see you later. Thanks so much. Bye.